How's it going, everyone? It is Draco. We're back with another chapter of Fairy Tale 100 Year Quest, Chapter 91 My World. The cover page for this week has Lucy, Happy, and Natsu on it, and they're like doing, I'm gonna assume it's like those photo cutout things that you'll see around, but they have Lucy in the like cutout for a bodybuilder dude, which uh, Natsu and Happy are finding this absolutely hilarious but uh lucy is not very thrilled by it and and to be honest i feel very weird about seeing lucy you know like with that body like you're just like what what's going on here which to be honest now i don't really love this cover just because it freaks me out so much seeing lucy like that so we pick up our chapter back at the diablos guild where silene had just killed the diablos guild master and like the whole guild's there all freaking out that their master's dead and you see silene in her dragon form and they're all freaked out they're all in shock like oh my goodness our master's dead oh no and you get kind of a uh, recap a little bit of last chapter of Silene saying she's gonna spare Suzaku and uh Suzaku ain't having it because he's like I'm gonna fight you with all my might but you get a little bit of uh more info on it because she said Suzaku actually managed to beat her while in her human form but he'd have no chance of beating her when she is in her dragon form which again she talks him down by like oh your power level is not good enough to beat me so just stand down, I acknowledge your strength, you know, just stop it so I don't have to freaking kill you. Which I guess she got him to stand down on a little bit enough because he doesn't immediately go for an attack. And Silene starts asking questions to the other guild members, like, is there more people in this guild that are on the same skill level and strength as Suzaku? And they answer, you know, there's three more, and she's, like, going crazy. There's just three more of this guy? Like, that's hilarious. And she can't even entirely believe that just consuming the flesh of a dragon made them that frightening. Which this next panel is like, okay, I did not think we were going to go in this direction. Previously in the last chapter, I thought Silene was either going to kill the whole Diablos guild and spare Suzaku, or like they were going to try and attack her, maybe wound her, but it wasn't going to go anywhere. I came to the conclusion that basically the Diablos guild was probably going to get destroyed in this chapter, but I did not think that this would happen right here. So instead of destroying the guild, uh, Silene decides, oh, I'm the new guild master of Diablos which rightfully so all the members are pretty shocked that she's trying to do this and like none of them are really having it especially Suzaku and Silene just does not care she's just like kneel to me now which is doing the lines like I wonder if she's like exerting magic power right here because uh two of them do it it looks like and Suzaku just gets pushed to the ground so like is it like gravity magic kind of the, like the thing that Guild Arts did back at Tenro which uh Kyra ain't really freaking having it because uh she's still standing up and she's like quit joking around and she like jumps straight at her and she's like dragon hunting is our specialty and uh you know Suzaku's freaking out but uh Silene just does not care and uh she does a massive like moon attack on her and just like you're gone you get a few of the uh members reacting to this attack and like Kyra freaking freaking out for her life and you know a big late explosion and you know of course her guild mates are freaking out that their friend just disappeared and uh you get uh Silene deciding okay you know enough of this little dragon form let's go back to the human form which uh, I guess she wasn't gonna go that cold hard because I was like oh wow she just freaking obliterated this chick but no I guess she just sent her to another dimension and she's totally alive totally fine and of course the guild's like return her to us now and, and suddenly she's like yeah I don't really hate the like tomboy-ish girls that like that girl is uh you know I'll, I'll, I'll keep her in there for now she twists this really fast to where it's now a hostage situation and then she's like okay now depending on your response to the next uh, lines here. If you acknowledge me as your guild master, you know, I might, I might return, you know, just, just bow down to me right now. Which, uh, this is where she starts her whole proposal phase here. And she starts going on about, you know, I have some good news for you that, you know, the dragons you're after, I know where they are. And all I want is your assistance. And they're all, like, rightfully skeptical because they're like, well, you know, you're going after the dragon gods and stuff as well, you know, like we are as well. You know, but why should we help you? You know, like, what are, what's in it for you? Her answer is just distortion. Distortion gives a rise to power. And she, you know, sweetens the deal like, oh, we're going to have a dragon and humans that consume dragons team up together and we shall become unstoppable. And the distortion will 
will result in like the most maximum power of the world. So Suzaku's like, so you just want to defeat dragons? And Silene starts talking about the other dragon gods that stand in their way. Uh, two of them we've already like basically defeated the water dragon god and the wood dragon god. Which by the way, this actually gives a good time frame of how long this past arc has been. Because she said the wood dragon god was defeated a few days ago. Which that was the previous arc before we went like back to Edelus and we had the whole Silene stuff happen. So that implies that Edelus and all the Silene stuff literally happened like within a few days. So she starts talking about the other dragon gods and you know one of them we already know the fire dragon god. I sincerely doubt this is an actual photo of this one because it looks like it's just like a cave drawing. She says the main problem is the gold dragon god. That's probably just like a cave drawing like the freaking dragon king festival drawing on the wall. So Psylene basically goes on to say that the fire dragon god and the gold dragon god, as long as those two are alive, my world will not be complete. She's kind of going the opposite of uh, some previous people we've had in the story and stuff. Instead of a world of dragons, she wants a world devoid of dragons and a world of only humans. And of course the Yavos is like, well, why would you want that? Why would you want to kill off all your kind? You know, all the dragons in the world. And she wants to live in this world as a human, but she be a human with the strongest power. They're all like, well, why, why do you want to become a human? And it's like, well, you know, it's not because I want to. It's just simply because, you know, the providence of this age, the age of dragons ended 400 years ago. And, you know, Acnologia and the five dragon gods basically delayed our, you know, demise. So she basically just wants to 100% fully kill off the dragon age and make sure dragons are like purely extinct. Which is kind of cool that we get to learn like more of Silene's motivation. Silene's basically saying for 400 years the five dragon gods have like kept each other in check, but they've kind of distorted the world as a side effect. And the main reason that they never really fought was their strength was pretty much equal between the five, and they would pretty much probably cause mutual destruction and just never really bothered to fight each other just because it was not going to be a win-win for either side. Silene came up with a solution to this problem and she realized the key to winning this battle was humans. So she basically wants to make them her lackeys like, oh, well, if you got the strength for it, you could probably defeat the two other dragon gods, but you know, got to be pretty strong for it. Silene goes on like, oh yeah, the other dragon gods, they're not going to believe the strength that humans possess, but your battle with me, Sezagu, it changed my mind. I saw the strength of humans within you. She's getting more into her deal here uh, of, uh, you know, if we work together, we could change this world. Which uh, they're like, okay, that's all good and all, but you still killed our guild master. The shot of like Silene, I literally think it looks like a, like a mad version of Mavis. Like Silene isn't having this. She's basically like, your guild master, you know, killed my son. You know, he was my enemy, okay? You know, back down. She continues to go on about, you know, you should let go of this guy. You know, if he could be defeated by me just stomping my foot on him, was he really worthy of being your guild master? She starts bringing back Kira. On top of that, she just wants to rub it in more to them. Like, oh yeah, you, if you can defeat the dragon gods, you know, I will happily be your opponent as many times as you want. You want to avenge that pathetic guild master. <laughs> Sailing gets a uh, real crazy psychopathic right here, saying, you know, until then we will be allies. Be proud, you should feel quite superior with a dragon at your back. Which uh, again, I don't know if it's like got like her exerting magic power or something, but they all, you know, start kneeling. It's got like the guild arts lines again. And, uh, you know, they're all practically crying. They all agree to uh, have her be the guild master. Silene's first order as a guild master. She wants Suzaku and the other dragon slayers that are at his caliber uh, to be gathered together. So they call them the Dark Dragon Slayer Knights. And the next thing she wants them to do is go and kill Elefseria, which uh, she basically equates him to Acnologia. Became a dragon the same way Acnologia did. He's like, yeah, I can kill him on my own, but I want to see your power. I want to see you do your jobs and kill a dragon. We go away from Silene and we go to the town of Drymill, and we're back with the Fairy Tale Guild. And Natsu and his team are finally starting to head out. Most of the guild's pretty disappointed that they're leaving, but he's like, yeah, it's starting to feel like home here. And, you know, if we stay here for too long, we're not going to want to leave. Which this is kind of a unique thing because you get the uh, Mira Jane talking about, oh, well, we're on our little sightseeing tour right now, but uh, after a little bit, we'll go back to Magnolia. Which uh, Juvia is having a freak out that Gray's about to leave her, and you know, he's like, it's just a job, calm it down a little bit. And Juvia's like, I'll follow you in secret. 
And Gray's like, oh, it's not, it's not secret if you tell me. Which uh, you get to Happy and Lily saying goodbyes and like, oh, tell me more about your adventures. This is kind of a funny because there's a little change up on the joke. So Jet and Droy are basically like, oh, Wendy, you've grown a little bit. And like, Wendy's like, well, no, I haven't changed one bit. But I did grow a little bit for a little while, uh, making reference to her adult form that she just had in the last arc. We get the shot of Team Fairy Tail leaving the guild yet again and going back on the 100-year quest. Also, is Lucy in her Sun Village outfit again? Kind of looks like it, but she just has a different hairstyle now. You get a big shot of the guild saying goodbye and like wishing them all luck. Juvie is still crying in the background. So as they're out back on their adventure, they start thinking, okay. Well, we're off, but where to? Because we don't know where any other dragons are right now. And Silene went missing. We have no intel on any other ones. So Urza comes up with the idea of why don't we go back and visit Elfinzer? And, uh, you know, maybe he'll have more leads. And that is the end of our chapter. And also Urza is towing, like, the giant luggage boxes that she always was carrying. So it's nice to see that back. So my thoughts on this chapter. Um, wow, they really spin the Diablos thing. I thought the whole Diablos skill was about to get killed off. We, uh, we didn't get them killed off. And now they are actively uh, working with Silene and she is now a guild master. I don't think we've met the three other dragon slayers that are up to Suzaku's caliber. If we did, I literally do not remember them. If you know it, just put in the comments below. But uh, they should be interesting to meet. So that will be kind of an interesting fight because, you know, Team Fairy Tail is uh, going to the same location that Diabolus is about to go to to go challenge the same dragon, while Team Fairy Tail is going there just for intel. So they're about to have a, a battle. So Fairy Tail is yet again going up against another guild. Now they're going up against a dragon slaying guild with a dragon as its master it's cool that we get to learn a little bit more about Silene, like why she's doing what she's doing like what sh her end goals here but you know obviously besides the bigger beats of you know her being a guild master and taking over diablos and now they're gonna go attack dragons and you know team fairy Tail trying to go find leads um not too much all happened here besides you know the Diablo stuff. But we're about to go into big fight territory. That's my guess. Leave your thoughts down below in the comments. Thank you for watching, and this is Drago signing out.